Hello friends, this is Saurabh here, back again at Progressive Coder. One of the most common features that you are expected to write in your uh, front-end application using React could be to make an API call to some back-end server and fetch some data. This is one of the most common use cases that you will come across when you start your web development journey. In this video, we are going to look at how easy it is to make a RESTful API call in a React component. And we are going to look at two ways. One, through a class component, the usual way. And now, also using React hooks in the functional components, that is using the use effect React hook. So we'll look at both these approaches and this will make things very, very clear for you on how to proceed on making a API call. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I will recommend you to please subscribe to Progressive Coder. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload a new video. So without wasting more time, let's start writing some code and making our RESTful API calls from React Component. Alright, so let's make an API call from our class component. But to do that, we first need an API. Uh, for that purpose, I have here something known as JSON placeholder. So this is a very great service provided by some uh, really nice people. And these are basically fake APIs that you can use to simulate an API call from your source code. And they provide a bunch of resources. They have posts, comments, albums, photos, to-dos, users. And they have most of the HTTP routes. Uh, which you might want to test HTTP methods as well, like get post, put, patched, and delete. So this is a very, very great approach to test your API calls. And we are going to be using the todos API. So if I hit this particular endpoint, I see a JSON uh, output with all the todos they have. And if I basically add an ID over here, say one, I get output only for one to-do. Basically the to-do that has an ID of one. And if I use two, I get the to-do detail details for ID two. So this is a great uh, way for, uh, for trying out your API calls in React or any other framework for that matter. So we'll be using this. So let's move to our source code. And the first step that we need to do over here is to create our constructor method. And here we will be having uh, two state variables. So one will be used to store the title and uh, the second one can be the description. So title can be an ID here. We'll go with ID as a title. And then this title itself can be a description for us uh, just to simulate. So, so we will have basically a title and this will be blank to begin with. And then we'll have description like so. <clears throat> and we will be having a render method so render method is mandatory for every class component and here we are going to be returning some html code so basically we can have something like to do info let's put up a line separator and then an h3 tag here we can display the title And then here we can display description. So these are two fields we have. And finally, to make the API call, we will be using component did mount. So in component did mount, we'll be using the normal JavaScript fetch API. This is going to take a URL. So we'll be using this URL. And 
the output from this is a promise that resolves to a response and from that response we will be getting another promise that will finally resolve to the actual JSON payload and that JSON payload we will use and we will be basically calling the this set state method and we will be updating the title and then the description so don't get confused with the names over here so title is this field which is basically a description in this case for us and the id is this particular id value over here which we are putting in the title field so this is our code and it is done basically and we can now start our application So npm start will basically create a dev server and will not use edge. I will go back to Chrome over here and navigate to localhost 3000 and yes, we can see our output over here in case it is not that visible. So this is the ID and this is the description or title coming from the site over here and this is the way we are able to call apis from our class components let's see the same thing now in functional component using the effect hook so let's change this component now to a function component so first step we have to use we have to import use state and uh, also use effect both of these uh, lifecycle methods uh, or basically react hooks and next step function so we are changing it to a functional component we can get rid of the constructor now and instead what we can have is uh, we can declare our pieces of uh, pieces of state like this so title set title and use state and we can go with blank uh, next we can simply copy this guy and uh, second thing we have is description set description and that also we can start with blank and then we don't need a component did mount method so we can use use effect and this will have a callback that is basically going to call our fetch api and instead of uh, this particular statement we will have set title which will be json.id and set description this will have json dot title and we can then get rid of this and also the component did mount method and functional components don't have a render method they directly have a return so i guess we'll have a few issues with parentheses we can simply format it and uh, here we, we don't need uh, this type of this dot state syntax we can directly pull out the state items so title and description and that's about it so compilation has gone through fine and we can see that it works so the same output is now coming but instead of using the class component and the use and, and the component did mount method we are using use effect hook to to make a call to the api and then updating the state items of title and description. Hope this video was useful. Uh, we have looked at making API calls from both class components and the functional component. And as you can see, functional component looks little more uh, easy to understand. Uh, but that's again a personal opinion. 
So if you found this video useful, uh, I would definitely request you to please subscribe to the channel Progressive Coder. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified as and when I upload a new video. We'll be uploading and looking at a lot of such things in the coming coming days. Uh, till then, have a nice day everyone. Goodbye.